Welcome back to my grungy vintage junk journal series. So we've already dived deep into crafting a unique cover, selecting the materials and embedding that grungy touch. Today in part six, we're unlocking the power of layering. This phase is where texture and depth come alive, adding a dynamic tactile experience to each page. And with each layer, we unveil a new story, a fresh perspective, enriching our journal with character and soul. So I have prepared some materials to work with today. I've made some smaller fabric scraps of the same fabrics that I have used so far. I have torn a few pieces of this beautiful paper that I buy locally. If you don't have anything, oops, this goes here. If, I, if you don't have anything like this, just use any patterned paper that you have. Could be a printable, could be from your designer paper cardstock, whatever you have. Then I have these vintage paper scraps, bits and pieces. I've shown you these when I showed you the materials I selected. So this is like a short list from that selection. <laughs> then I have taken out my prints that I printed on transparencies. Again, I showed you how I do this in one of the previous videos where I showed you the material. So these are prints from my Digital Kit Lives Remembered. You can find that linked below. You don't have to use transparencies at all for this project. It's just what I want to do. And then I don't know if I'm actually going to use these, but maybe I will use some of these scraps. These are some papers that I have from playing around and experimenting with embossing folders and resist techniques. This is a piece of packaging paper where I just put a stencil that I had sprayed on with the reverse side here. And I think that makes a really cool print. And then this one here I used to experiment. This was black cardstock. And uh, let me show you what I used. So I recently got myself this Distress Texture Paste Black Opaque by Ranger and Tim Holtz. Let me show you what it looks like like this so it's actually not really really black although it does kind of look black here on camera but i would say it's more dark gray than black so i put it through a stencil with these fun dots here actually let me show you the stencil as well so it's this stencil here by a ranger and diane reevely dilutions collection and it's called what is it called <laughs> here it's called Coins Large and it has a number DYS78012. Very, very fun stencil. So after that had dried and I let it air dry, I just added some mica stains. How cool. And then these gold splatters are actually alcohol ink. I had a lot of fun experimenting with these. And then I also have these grungy journaling cards that I made on heavy watercolor paper. These are experiments using distress oxides and alcohol ink. The gold again is the alcohol ink. I think this is coffee because it's glossy. So I'm thinking I added coffee here. My goodness, I did this not too long ago and I don't even remember, but yeah, it must be coffee. And these are quite thick to use. So I don't think I'll be using these originals, but as you can see here, I also have digital versions, which will be a lot easier to use. And you can find these linked below as well. So there's two pages, eight cards in total. And I think these work really well for a grungy journal. I did design them to be journaling cards, but obviously you can use them as backgrounds or anything you like. I think I'm going to be tearing these up and use bits and pieces in this journal as well. So I have put these in the order that I want them to be in the final project. And I would do that at this stage because now when we start layering, 
I like to see what will be on what page so that I can combine the pages so that they work. So I will take these out and we're going to start with the first signature. And I'll just cut these out as well and then let's get started. I think the best course of action here is in order not to become overwhelmed and not to spend such a long time on each page because I could imagine if I just concentrate on one page, I could spend easily up to an hour to complete it. So I think I'd rather take kind of like a mass making approach and take my piece of scraps and I'll start with these vintage ones and just distribute them throughout the two signatures. That just seems the most doable for me. I'm just going to tear these up. I'll also ink around them. I don't know that I'm going to do that for all of my papers. So also if you don't have any original vintage documents or you don't have access to anything vintage but you want to add something to your journal, I will also link some vintage documents from my shop in case you want to download those. So now I'm just going to try to distribute these more or less evenly throughout my signatures. And again, I'm doing my best not to become attached because I'm going to be covering up a lot of these. So obviously I don't want to put all of these from the same kind in the beginning. So I'll try to distribute them throughout the two signatures. Oh, and I have a tear here. So I'll just put this right over the tear. And in case I haven't mentioned it until now, if you've missed how we got here, you can find that playlist linked below. <laughs> Now, I'm not overthinking this. So we have one more of these left for signature two. This is really quite random. So I will just continue adding these randomly to my pages and then we move on to the next type of scrap. I love these vintage crosswords. <laughs> I found these in a book that I bought at a flea market at one point. So random and so cool. <laughs> then I have this paper, which is quite waxy. This is the one, if you've maybe seen our scraps unboxing videos, the one from Louise, Louise Heinzel, our scraps for Defemember. I gave Louise one of these waxy papers <laughs> and she had the hardest time touching it. I don't know why. I really think the feeling is very cool, but it's good to give her a challenge, right? <laughs> I'm very curious to see if she will use it during Defemember. If you've missed our unboxing videos, I will link those for you below as well. They were a lot of fun. So Louise and I each sent each other 50 scraps that we can use for Defemember. Yeah, what I actually wanted to say was that because they are waxy, I can't really use my glue. So instead, I'm just going to staple them on the pages. How cute is this stapler? I recently found this. There's no brand name. I'm so sorry. I wish I could have told you and it was the last piece and I don't even remember which shop this was to be honest but I knew I had to have it <laughs> so let's find some spots the staples are great they add another fun element let's have it peeking out a little bit actually I'm going to turn this around Don't staple through any pockets that you still want to use. <laughs> that would be totally a thing that I would do.
In school, I hated math. I was always terrible at it. But look how cool these formulas will look in a junk journal. I'm so happy to finally have found a reason to like math. <laughs> Can anyone relate? I remember in high school when I had to do math homework or I had to study for a math test, my dad always tried to help me. And the biggest challenge were word problems. Oh my goodness. And it usually ended with me in tears because I just couldn't understand. My dad was trying to be patient, explaining it for the third, fourth, fifth time. And I was like, I don't get it. <laughs> I am so happy those times are over. Oh, this was not good. Hmm. Okay, well, it's okay. We'll, we'll cover most of it up anyway. So the next type of paper I want to add are these grungy journaling cards. So I have torn some of them up. I've sewn around them just once and I have inked up the edges with walnut stain. And if you're as lucky as me, then you will get some of these cool stitches here <laughs> to add to the grungy raggedy look. Only managed on two. So the more of a beginner sewer you are, the better actually for junk journaling. I discover that over and over again. And I'll just do the same thing. If you like the look of the stitching, but you don't want to sew or you don't have a sewing machine, you could just do some faux stitching with a black fine liner, something like this, for example. Or you could try to find a stamp online with stitching. My next layer is going to be fabric scraps. So I have cut these down even further and I have frayed all of my edges. And I'm going to use my textile glue from Action Use any PVA glue, check the thickness. If it's too thick, then you just add a little bit of water like I did to this one. And again, I'm just going to start adding these to my pages. If you've missed the selection of my fabrics, their names and everything and where I get them from, you can refer to, I think it's the second video in the series where I show you all the materials. You could of course also attach your fabric by stapling. These are a bit tricky now actually because since it's fabric, it's a porous material. So I'm, I can't just put it on like this and then turn the page because these will stick together. So I actually need to let this dry. So either use a heat gun or take the pages apart and first do all, let's say, front sides and then let them dry. And then you turn them all around and you do all the back sides. And I always like my pieces to overlap. So I don't just put them in random places. You see here, I'm overlapping here. All the three pieces are overlapping. I hear you might be thinking, why didn't I overlap these two? That's because I have the red here and I want the red here, not too close to this red because they're both quite dominant colors but I know I'm going to add some other pieces in the middle here to connect them. This one has got to be one of the coolest ones. This is called Postcards and it's from Marsha Dursey. So I have a fabric piece on every single page and my next layer is going to be these beautiful patterned papers. I don't know that I'm necessarily going to add a piece to every page. We'll just see as we go along. Oh, I should have maybe added a butterfly to the first one. I can obviously still do that.
If you love the butterfly look, obviously you could just stamp some papers if you have some butterfly stamps or maybe you have a die cut, maybe you have images from vintage books of butterflies, maybe you have a printable of butterflies. So there's many, many options. And next, I'm going to be adding some of these scraps right here. Lots and lots of layering. So at this point, I'm always thinking about how to balance the colors. So I have dark here, I have dark here. So a good place to put another dark one might be down here. I wouldn't want them all in the same area. We could add some sticking out a little bit, why not? And for the final layer today, we're going to add some pieces of these transparencies. So obviously I need to cut these down and I'm going to think about which ones could have some focal points. For example, I have this clock kind of thing here. <laughs> that could be a focal point. Also this full writing here looks super cool. Obviously, these faces are great focal points, so I'm not going to cut through those. This here as well. Maybe I'll just keep this together. I don't know yet for sure. And I'm going to keep in mind that I also, of course, still want to add some of these here, which are small printouts of my Lives Remembered kit. So I definitely want to leave room for those. Mostly probably the faces. So here, for example, I really like this clock, but it's kind of hard to see. Maybe I'll put it down here. And since transparencies are a little bit more challenging to glue down, I am again going to staple them. Maybe I'll first find my faces to be able to distribute those. There's just three on the two pages that I printed. And I think they should go on light backgrounds so that we can see them better. And it's kind of nice to be able to lift them up to still see the layers underneath. So then we'll add him somewhere, maybe somewhere more towards the middle. Oh, how about here? way I could still stick something underneath if I wanted to and then we just need a spot for her more towards the back mm, this might be a good one this envelope or this one oh I like it there let's do that And then I'll go ahead and add a few more of these more interesting pieces on some of the other pages. So did you see what I just did? <laughs> I stapled right through my envelope. So this is no longer an envelope. 
I could easily take this off but I really like it there and I don't feel like messing around with glue on this transparency so I am making the executive decision that this will no longer be an envelope <laughs> it will just be a page so let me give you a flip through of what we have so far as you can see it's starting to fill out these no longer meet There is so much to look at on these pages. And there we have it. I hope you enjoyed exploring the magical world of layering in our grungy vintage dunk journal. Remember, every layer is a new journey, a fresh adventure, echoing the unique creator you are. Stay tuned for more creative escapades in this journal. Happy layering. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.